Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 lone survivors of a plane crash. Ever since the invention of the first piloted airplane designed by Orville and Wilbur Wright, using airplanes as a method of transportation has become very popular. Those two men on May 14, 1908, were the first to successfully pilot a fixed two-wing airplane. However, the first fatal airplane crash was almost that same year. Thomas Selfridge was killed when Orville unsuccessfully flew the plane during a demonstration for the U.S. Army Signal Corps. The Wright propeller broke, which eventually caused the plane to nosedive even though Orville had glided the plane for about 70 feet. Because of greatly improved methods of utilizing flying and running airplanes, the odds of one dying is not very high. For instance, when flying on a single airline flight, your chances of dying are 1 in about 10.87 million. However, the odds of surviving a plane crash are even lower. While some may consider it to be a miracle to survive such a crash, there are people who have been the only survivor of a fatal crash. Studies have shown that those who sit more towards the tail end of the plane are likely to survive a crash, but of course that depends on the cause of the crash. In the video today, we're looking at 10 people who somehow survived a plane that was downed either due to pilot failure or some other problem. While 10 may seem like a rather small number, since 1970 there have only been 12 lone survivors of a plane crash. Number 10. Annette Hufkins, 30 Fatalities On November 14, 1991, Annette Hufkins would make history as the only survivor of a Vietnam Airlines plane carrying 25 passengers and six crew members. The plane was flying during takeoff, but sometime during the flight, the plane was flying too low and hit a mountain in Vietnam. Hufkins was the only surviving passenger who lied in the wreckage area for eight days until rescue teams were able to reach her. She was 31 at the time and suffered numerous injuries, but kept herself alive by drinking rainwater. While Hufkins has stated that after the crash, she heard voices from other passengers and crew members on the plane, by the time rescue workers were able to reach her, all of them had died from their injuries. Years later, many families worried whether or not the body given to them claiming to be their loved one was actually the right body. Apparently, three of the bodies had been sent to the wrong country, and a mix-up could have occurred. This means that those families might have paid for the transportation of the wrong body. Those who have studied the crash also indicate that if rescuers were sent out on foot, more survivors may have been found and saved. Number 9. First Lieutenant Martin Farkas, 43 Fatalities the only military aircraft crash featured on this list, the Anatov AN-24, eventually met its demise on January 19, 2006. The airplane was boarded by 44 Slovak peacekeepers, but only one of them would make it out alive. The aircraft was downed after it hit treetops, which caused it to catch fire. It crashed in heavily forested terrain that was covered by snow known as Borso Hill, which is about 2,300 feet up. His survival is deemed a miracle, but his swift and smart actions definitely helped to save his life. After the plane crashed, he located his cell phone and contacted his wife and alerted her to contact rescue services so that he could be found and those who died in the crash could be located as well. Soon after, he was rescued from the cold and taken to a hospital with lung injuries and brain swelling. To allow his body to heal, he was put into a medically induced coma, but soon after, he was deemed to be in a stable condition. During the time of the crash, Farkas was in the plane's bathroom, which may have saved his life as this part of the plane had very little damage. It may be due to the fact that the bathroom is at the end of the plane, but no one will ever really know. This crash is ultimately blamed on the pilot, who made a quick turn much too early. Number 8. James Polhinky, 49 Fatalities Delta Connection Flight 5191 headed from Lexington, Kentucky to Atlanta, Georgia, carrying 47 passengers and three crew members, is another miracle plane crash. On the 27th of August 2006, the plane was scheduled to leave Bluegrass Airport. The plane was first set to use runway 22 for takeoff, but somehow found itself on runway 26, which was much shorter than the one planned. 4,000 feet shorter, in fact. Because of this, before the plane could even lift off the runway, it ran out of room, running off the runway and eventually crashing. All of the passengers died, but one crew member lived. His name was James Polhinky. Polhinky was the first officer of the plane and suffered very serious injuries, including a collapsed lung, numerous broken bones, and heavy bleeding. His left leg was amputated, and because of the brain damage from the plane, Polhinky does not remember the event or anything leading up to it. Confined to a wheelchair, Polhinky wanted some sort of case for negligence, as did 45 of the 47 families of those on the plane. The cause of the crash is heavily blamed on those in the cockpit, as the National Transportation Safety Board Board stated that the pilots did not use the provided cues to properly identify where the plane was on the runway. Others blame it on conversations within the cockpit as well as the outdated runway maps. Number 7. Nuba Tesso, 50 Fatalities 
On a plane leaving Abidjan, Ivory Coast, on January 3, 1987, there were 39 passengers and a 12-man crew. While the plane was able to successfully get off the ground and into the air, the normalcy of the flight would be very short-lived. Only 11 miles from the airport it took off from, the Varig Airlines Boeing 707 crashed, killing all of the passengers and crew except one member. Nubatesso stands as the only survivor of the crash. The plane was headed for Rio de Janeiro, but was cut short after attempting to fly back to the airport due to a mechanical issue with the plane. According to reports, the plane had a severe issue with its left engine, which prompted those in the cockpit to turn the plane around and head back to the airport. While many people were pulled from the wreckage alive, only Tesso was able to survive his injuries. Number 6. Erica Delgado – 51 Fatalities on January 11, 1995, Erica Delgado, 10 years old at the time, and her parents boarded Intercontinental Airlines Flight 256, which was leaving Bogota, Colombia, in order to reach Cartagena. It is said that the pilot was attempting an emergency landing at a nearby swamp, but somehow the plane hit a grassy field, exploded, and then went into a lagoon. Those who saw the crash on the ground say that the plane went down without any lights and slammed hard into the ground. Everyone but Erica Delgado, including her parents, died in the plane crash. She was thrown from the plane and landed on a mound of seaweed, which kept her from hitting the ground at a fatal impact. Farmers eventually heard her cries and came to her rescue. During her rescue, she told farmers that her mother had pushed her out of the plane before it exploded. Only 32 of the 51 dead were found. Other bodies may have been brought downstream. After the crash, Delgado spoke about looters and how one of them took her gold necklace from around her neck, the only thing she had left of her father. She also explained how looters took other items from the passengers as well. However, at the end of it all, Delgado went to the hospital with just a few bumps and bruises, the most serious injury being a broken arm. Number 5. George Lampson Jr. 70 Fatalities Just like many others on this list, George Lampson Jr. was young when he had to experience the horror of a fatal plane accident. A day after the Super Bowl, when the San Francisco 49ers beat the Miami Dolphins, Lampson and his father were in Nevada celebrating, but had to go back home to Minnesota. Besides these two, 68 others boarded the small plane. Galaxy Flight 203 was a four-engine plane, and because of its size, an air cart was often used to start each engine. However, somehow communication between between those in the cockpit and those on the ground didn't occur, and the air start access door was left open after disconnecting the hose. The plane, unknowing of this mistake, took off, but a few minutes later, the first officer requested that the plane be returned to the runway because of vibration and took a right turn. Less than a minute after this signal, the plane crashed. George Lampson Jr. was ejected from the plane, still buckled into his seat, but quickly unbuckled himself and ran for an empty field before the plane would explode. Though his father did make it out alive after the plane crashed, he eventually succumbed to head injuries as well as massive burns. Today, Lampson has been very quiet and private about the crash, and has avoided talking to the media about his experience. Number 4. Julianne Kupka – 91 Fatalities on December 24, 1971, Julianne Kupka, along with 90 other people, boarded Lancer Flight 508, leaving Lima, Peru, and headed for Pacalpa, Peru, the first and only stop. The final destination was Iquitos, Peru. At the age of 17, Kupka was in Peru studying zoology and was hoping to follow in the footsteps of her parents, who also had similar career paths. While the short ride would seem like a breeze, it was anything but. Takeoff was fine on the plane, but once it hit an altitude of 21,000 feet, the plane was caught in thunderstorms and hit a lot of turbulence. The pilot decided to continue to fly through, despite the hazardous weather, and because of this, ultimately downed the plane. A strike of lightning crashed through the fuel tank in the right wing, and the plane quickly disintegrated. However, Kupka was fine after all was said and done. After falling about two miles, still strapped into her seat, Kupka landed somewhere within the Amazon rainforest and was there for ten days. She was able to make her way downstream, where she came upon a canoe and shelter. She decided to stay there and wait, and eventually a lumberman came to her rescue and took care of her injuries. She had a broken collarbone, a wound to her right arm that was infested with bugs, and an injury to her eye that left it swollen shut. While she wanted to locate her mother, who was on the flight with her, her search was unsuccessful, and she eventually learned of her death. Kupka was able to complete her zoology degree, and two movies have been made about her depicting her experience. These are Wings of Hope and Miracles Still Happen. Number 3. Mohamed El Fateh Osman – 115 Fatalities Mohamed El Fateh Osman stands as the youngest person to ever survive a plane crash. On July 8, 2003, a Boeing 737 run by Sudan Airways was leaving Port Sudan and was headed to Khartoum. However, the pilot noticed that one of the engines was not functioning properly, so it was turned off and he radioed that he was headed back to the airport. However, about 10 minutes after this signaling to the towers, the plane crashed after the pilot attempted to complete an emergency landing. 
landing. Carrying 116 people, including crew members, two-year-old Mohammed al fatah Osman somehow survived the crash, while the others, including his mother, were killed. He was found near a tree and was sent to the hospital, where he was treated for burns. While Osman did survive, he did lose part of his leg because of the crash. Specialists in aviation safety have long studied this crash and have concluded that children are more likely to survive due to the fact that they have a lighter mass and that a tree or some other object could easily break the fall. Those bodies that were left after the crash were burned in a massive grave due to the condition of them. Today, a marking stands at the exact location of the wreck. Number 2. Bahir Bakari, 152 Fatalities Yemeni Flight 626 stands as the second deadliest plane crash ever and the most deadly ocean crash in aviation history. The plane left Sanaa, Yemen and was headed to Moroni, Comoros on June 30, 2009. The plane carried 153, 11 of them were crew members. On the plane was French schoolgirl Bahia Bakari along with her mother. The two were headed to Comoros for a summer vacation, which would never happen. A few minutes before the plane was to arrive in Comoros, it suddenly crashed into the Indian Ocean, which split the plane into many pieces, and everyone but the 14-year-old girl was killed. This was considered something of a miracle, especially after looking at the statistics of one surviving a crash in the ocean. For about 13 hours, Bakari floated on the water. Most of the time, it was dark outside, but she was able to hold on to wreckage debris that kept her above the waves. After the crash, all boats in the vicinity were asked to support a search and rescue mission. Seamacom 2, a privately owned ship, spotted Bakari and a sailor jumped off the ship to rescue her as she was much too weak to swim to grab onto the flotation device on her own. While everyone else on the plane died, Bakari was sent to hospital and treated for cuts, bruises, burns on her knee and a broken collarbone as well as exhaustion. Soon after the crash, French cooperation minister Hélène Jordanet flew Bakari back to France on a private plane. Number 1. Cecilia Sachan, 156 Fatalities On August 16, 1987, a flight was leaving MBS International Airport in Saginaw, Michigan, headed to John Wayne Airport in Santa Ana, California. The plane, Northwest Airlines Flight 255, carried Cecilia Sachan and her family, including her parents, Paula and Michael, and her brother, David. Carrying 149 passengers and six crew, the plane was able to make its way down the runway, but trouble arose when it was time for liftoff. During this time, as the plane was attempting to make its way off the ground, it rolled 40 degrees to the left, causing the left wing to hit a light pole located at the end of the runway, and then struck the roof of a rental car, and finally crashed crashed on the I-94 expressway. Everyone on the plane died, with the exception of Cecilia, who was four years old at the time, and her survival is seen as a true miracle. Two motorists on I-94 were also killed, bringing the death toll to 156. After the crash, investigations ensued, and the National Transportation Safety Board determined that the crash was caused by pilot error, as those in the cockpit failed to make sure that the plane's slats and flaps were extended for proper takeoff. There was also an absence of full electrical power, which caused a failure in the system to warn the crew that the plane was not ready for takeoff. So I really hope you found that video informative. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And as always, thank you for watching.